Not very often is my mind blown on a topic, but today my mind was blown away. This guy put out a killer video, okay? He starts off the video talking about petrified wood and petrified animals. And the usual scientific explanation doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? But he's talking about petrified wood. And, you know, usually what they tell you is that it was some sort of, you know, lava that flowed over it and petrified it somehow and, and got it to a point to where there's no oxygen to, or, or bacteria to, you know, eat and the rotting flesh of the animal or deteriorate whatever vegetation was there. And you end up with something like this. You get like precious gems within petrified wood. So obviously, you know, the uniformitarianism that the evolutionist will tell you, well, it was over long periods of time that this happened, right? So obviously lava doesn't do that because if you put lava over trees, it's just going to burn up. It ain't rocket science, right? So something catastrophic, some sort of catastrophe has to occur to basically bury trees or animals so quickly and so tightly that no oxygen can get to it, no bacteria can get to it. And of course, you know, the first thing that comes to some people's minds is the flood, right? So here's his, you know, image of how if you actually put a tree under lava, it's going to burn. It ain't rocket science, right? Um, but this is what scientists tell us. They tell us dumb things like this. Okay. Now here's the thing that's going to blow your mind. You see these trees, right? These look like they're trees, but notice, and we're going to build up to this. Notice that these are cut. Okay. This is petrified wood that's cut. So obviously some cut it with some sort of tool a long time ago. Also, you know, compared to the sequoias, these are not very big. These aren't the trees. These are the limbs of a tree. These are limbs of a tree. Okay. Now, he's trying to give a hint here of what's going on. And, and of course, you actually have absolutely have no clue what he's talking about when he does that. But you might when you look at this. Okay, first, you see this stump here? Now, most people would say, well, that was a tree stump that was cut off, cut, a tree was cut down, right? Well, what if it, what if I told you it was actually a lava flow that came up over 40 million years ago and created that? You'd think I was crazy, right? Well, what about this here? <laughs> what is this? This is Devil's Tower. Okay, they tell you that lava created this, that it came up and created this. Now, here, here's why it's completely and utterly ridiculous. You see that? Those people are climbing on these, right? What is that? Why, why is there rocks that are completely uniform with each other in a hexagonal shape, not actually connected together? They're in a hexagonal shape, all tightly fit together. That looks really odd, right? Does that look like lava would create something like that? Do you? Now, there's a reason why I'm asking you that question. You see how he's showing this straight edge? This is pretty straight. And he's showing here how this could be made he's just making up sort of a funny joke on how it was made you know it, obviously lava is not going to flow up and make hexagonal shaped stem features of rocks that are not even connected together and if one falls it, it falls separate from the other ones it just doesn't make any sense it's, it, it's completely illogical but this is what they tell you is how it was formed 100 percent grade a bullshit basically Okay, now this guy gives you another idea of how these were formed. He says in nature, the hexagonal shape is the most efficient shape. And actually many things fall into this hexagonal nature. 
And what he did is he looked in some botany books for the structure you see there on Devil's Tower. And he found something with stem plants. This is a stem cross section, um, stem fiber. Okay. And he shows it here. You can see how it's got hexagonal shapes in here, doesn't it? Let's see if I can find one over here. Maybe this one here. Let's see how big it is. That's pretty big. You get kind of a hexagonal shape with that. This is, of course, one particular type of plant. We don't know exactly what potential plants, okay, this Devil's Tower was. So what we're really looking at here is a tree stump. Yeah. And this isn't the only one in nature. And actually, there's many reasons why this can't be a lava formation. Uh, for one, this follows the, the pattern of a tree uh, stump where you have the root or going sort of outwards towards the ground. You see how that is? Look at the bottom. It, it, it widens out just like a tree stump does. And of course, no lava formation made this. It's just complete idiocy. These rocks are all separated from each other, but together in hexagonal perfect formation. And if one of these things falls apart, it falls separated from the other ones. It's not even attached. Obviously, if you look at lava, this is actually a movie that, that had this featured in a movie in, I think, the 1978. I think it's 78, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So... What I'm trying to get at is this thing would be a massive plant, some sort of fiber, fiber type of plant. Okay, so we're going to get into the numerous reasons why it can be a lava formation or any type of rock formation because, um, I mean, I'll show you pictures to prove it. But basically, there's, there's formations like this where there's no bottom even. And obviously lava doesn't flow from the sky downward, so it's not rocket science. But there's actually a lot of other things too. Um, but I wanted to show you this first. It's about how, how approximately tall it would be. Uh, this stem-based plant life. Something like a tree or some stem fiber, whatever it is. We don't know what this plant was. Obviously extremely huge. Um, it ends up being like, you know, a few miles tall, basically. That's how tall, and already this is plateaued at almost a mile high. So <laughs> this thing is huge. Okay. Now, of course, no one ever would think of this because they're like, well, obviously no plant can get that big, right? This is what a lot of people think. There's actually tons of these formations all around the earth. Okay. And the reason why they think it's impossible is because of our atmospheric pressure. Again, there's a lot of proof or a lot of uh, substantial evidence that we had a higher atmospheric pressure before in the ancient times. And this would explain like why they had longer lifespans. Uh, you read it in the Bible and actually many books, a lot of ancient books about uh, people living for hundreds or even thousands of years. Um, that would actually make sense if we had two or three atmospheres of pressure. Um, they use hyperbolic chambers these days to heal wounds quickly, where it would take, you know, many months to heal something. You can heal it in far less time in a hyperbolic chamber because it, it's, it simulates, you know, two or three atmospheres of pressure. Okay. And this would also explain why dinosaurs could live back in the ancient times and be the height that they were, because according to many scientists, a lot of dinosaurs couldn't even live today at, at the size that they were. Like the brontosaurus, its height, it would, there would be no way for it to pump blood throughout its whole body. If it was a higher atmospheric pressure, it would push the air down in its lungs and it would cause things to be a little bit easier for the dinosaur to live. So. A lot of these gigantic animals in the past uh, could easily get a lot larger because of a higher atmospheric pressure. They couldn't live today, which is actually proof that the atmospheric pressure was higher 
And if the atmospheric pressure was higher like that, you could have very large plants. Of course, uh, if, if you know anything about the Smithsonian conspiracy, about them hiding gigantic skeletons of humans, it wasn't just dinosaurs that were big in the ancient past. There was also humans that were gigantic, which, of course, I showed many newspaper clippings. Maybe I'll show some images in this video here of the Smithsonian coming and taking, you know, 10, 11 foot skeleton specimens and, you know, even larger than that. And uh, they just mysteriously disappear after the Smithsonian gets their hands on it. Usually it was uh, a lot of these newspaper clippings were from the 1800s and such. Uh, lots of them, to, uh, you know, throughout all the different states of America. Now, so things could have been a lot bigger in the past. And this could have actually been a plant that was so huge that it went miles into the air. It's just shocking to imagine, but that's what we're talking about here. Okay, he's going to show it here. I, I, I press play. Eventually he shows it. And then I'm going to show you some other examples. I think he actually has this too big based on what he was showing there. Because the stump doesn't match what he's showing really. But you get the idea. I mean, it's shocking to imagine, you know, and, but there are a lot of ancient stories about trees that were so huge, there were cities on them and such. Um, I think he even mentions it, Asgard and, and things of this nature. Uh, let's see here. And I think I actually saw this. I, th I think this is in Korea. I think this is in Jeju Island. I actually have a... I have a picture of me with stuff like this on one of my channels, believe it or not. Um, that's kind of crazy, actually. I realized it after I watched this video. I'm like, dude, I got a picture of me with this stuff. Uh, it's on my business channel. Let me show you real quick here. Got to go to my business channel. If it loads, you see this background here. We were at some waterfalls in Korea. Jeju Island, which is an island south south uh, of the Korean con uh, country. Um, mainland, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, but you see how they have different formations here too. Some of it's worn away. You can see it's the same fiber type of design. And you see water coming down in between some of these fibers right here. It's kind of interesting. That was a really cool place, actually. Uh... But this Devil's Tower, you know, it's not the only one. There's many of these type of things. Let's see here. He shows some other ones. I believe that's in Korea there. And I, I actually had a photo of something like that. Uh, I can't find it, though. Um, you see, I, I, I'm actually starting to believe that what they t teach us in school, the so-called science they teach us in school, is actually just a cover screen to keep you from actually learning the truth about what's going on. You know, with the Grand Canyon, obviously the Colorado River did not cut the Grand Canyon. It isn't rocket science. There was a Mount St. Helens eruption, I think it was in the 80s, that actually created a miniature Grand Canyon with the exact same type of shape with a small river in it afterwards. I think it was one, was it, uh, I can't remember the scale, but it was like, I don't know, like 120th scale Grand Canyon. And it was created from the Mount St. Helens eruption that caused a massive mudslide that carved out a mini Grand Canyon. It, exact type of shape with a little river in it. <laughs> I mean, that right there might be a better explanation of what occurred than, you know, millions of years in this Grand Canyon. And actually, what's interesting is the plateau top of the Grand Canyon is curved. So unless you believe rivers flow uphill, you got a problem, okay? So let's see here. And that, that doesn't really talk about what we're talking about here, but it's a flood that caused all this. And you have these gigantic, um, this is they call them causeways. But actually, this causeway, look, it, you can see the stem uh, fiber features with this. 
okay? And most plant life it ends up having this sort of type of shape of like sort of a hexagonal shape. Okay, so basically it's hard to see when it's something like this because it's been worn down so much. But with this Devil's Tower, what he's basically concluding, I'm going to show you what he's concluding with it. I should have mentioned it earlier. Um, if I can get to the right place. Okay, so basically what he's concluding is that all this stuff here around it has been removed and all you're seeing is a center. He actually draws something here. He's not doing it. Okay, there it goes. So like basically the center is what he thinks that Devil's Tower is. Again, the Devil's Tower is right here. So he thinks it's actually the center of it. And then all the rubble down below, there's actually a lot of rubble. He thinks was actually the outer parts. And actually he showed also that there's a thin skin on this. Um, you can see like in some places. But there's a thin skin that like breaks off kind of like a thin... A layer covering each one of these rock structures, these hexagonal rock fiber structures, and it breaks off uh, sort of like a coating on it, and it actually matches uh, certain features within fiber on these stems of certain plants. It's pretty crazy. So it actually fits sort of the stem fiber type of design. Of course, we're not talking about a tree per se, because Trees don't have this exact design. They're a little bit different on the inside, as you already know. Um, but this fits very well with certain types of like weed structures and such, <laughs> and flax and things of that nature. You just like imagine this massive weed thing or something. Um, it's crazy, you know. But how else are you going to explain it? And then he shows all these other structures too that fit this. There's like a lot of stuff. This is the salt flats. Okay, so they're trying to say that these salt flats here were like, you know, cracking from the sun. Cracks don't go upwards, and they're not hexagonal shape. Again, a false explanation for what's really going on here. If you ever look at cracked earth, it doesn't look like that at all. And it's definitely not hexagonal shape and perfect like that. All these are hexagonal. It's like some sort of stem fibrous thing it was clearly some sort of plant life of some sort maybe something like that isn't that crazy looking it's not explained by cracking of the ground or any of that garbage okay and there's actually a lot of other things he points to that could be like some sort of massive you know tree or something i'm not sure about these you know formations I don't know in these cases but it's interesting nonetheless he actually came up with some very interesting stuff um, some of these look like they could very well be potentially trees or ancient trees that got petrified or some sort of plant life that got petrified what we think is sometimes a mountain actually was some massive vegetation and the theory he had was that there was some sort of blast that destroyed everything and these were maybe somehow cut down in a sense we don't know but um and the reason why you don't see all the rest of them is because they were laid out now i mean this is really really pretty shocking to think about of course that there could be plant life that was this massive but if there was two or three atmospheres of air pressure and the air pressure was much different in the past it could explain why dinosaurs were so huge uh why humans were gi more giant back in the ancient times and it could also explain, uh, you know, potential giant vegetation, okay? Now, you even have the sequoias, which are pretty huge in of themselves. But, I mean, if you can imagine something like this, it's just insane compared to it. You know, like a sequoia <laughs> compared to that. I mean, that thing's mountainous, you know? It's just crazy. So, but then he showed also ones that he thought were maybe jagged edge, like wood that was broken off that people think are just rock formations. It could have actually been some plant life that was broken off. Okay, again, I wanna show you just the utter ridiculousness of the scientists proposed uh, answer for this problem. Okay, look at this. This is the formation. This is the formation right here. 
They're claiming that lava formatted this. Formated this. It looks like something you actually create almost. You know, as if a human created something and put it together. Or it could be plant life. Stem fiber. These rocks are all separated. This could be petrified stem fiber, just massive ones. You see what I'm saying? Lava does not explain any of this. I mean, if you look at how lava form formates, here we go. Here's an example. Here's these uh, stem formations. They're all separated. And here's lava formation. It flows. It's all together. You see the difference here? This is a lava formation, okay? And this is the... this this formation that we're talking about here. We're talking about literally separated hexagonal, perfect hexagonal separated rocks that go vertical. That nothing explains this except for these stem fibers or potentially someone made it, which is even more incredible to believe than this lava formation. This lava formation doesn't look anything like it. So clearly lava didn't create these you see the difference they're nothing alike there's no hexagonal shape in this lava you see the difference so this is kind of my point here this is this is clearly something he found I really think he's on to something with this um, and this devil's tower is just one of the top Proofs I've seen. I mean, the thing looks literally like a tree stump. It's just shocking how it looks. So he was thinking it could be something like this. You know, you've heard of massive tree, tree cities even. There's even fairy tales like this, you know. Movies you can see that are sort of like this. I, I recall seeing one movie. I can't remember his name. But it was about a guy who went back in time. He created a time machine, went back in time. I think it came out like... I'm thinking 10 years ago, he went back in time and there was this, these, there was humans, but there was these massive giant trees that they lived in and it was prehistoric times. And there was also prehistoric animals. It was kind of an interesting movie. Um, I wish I could remember the name of it, but it was something like this. It was kind of interesting. Maybe that's their way of putting it in your face and like, Hey, look, see, this is what it really is. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please share it with others, like, and subscribe. Also, check out our forums and make sure to get a copy of the 10 ebook collection on Freemasonry so you can truly understand and know your enemy. I've wanted to do this topic for quite a while.